Am I the a-hole for not giving my brother half of my business? My brother, I'll call him bro, had this great idea for a company. Bro had no money, and honestly is lazy. But he's creative. I fronted half the startup money from my savings where I was saving to buy a house. Our father, I'll call him dad, invested the other half with the idea that the company would pay him back within five years. Fast forward two years, and the business is struggling. Mainly because we had to hire someone else to work because my brother didn't do anything, just sat at a desk and goofed around on the internet. Company was about to go under, and when I told him that, he told me he'd sell me his half for $10,000. I take him up on it because honestly, I can save more than that by not paying him a salary for doing nothing. Now five years later, my company made the first $1 million annual net profit, and I now have five employees, and have long since paid dad back with interest. When I told dad about the milestone, he told bro, who had moved to Colorado with some friends with the money I'd given him for his half. They moved there because Mary Jane was legal. He called me saying that half of the company should be his because it was his idea. I reminded him that he sold me his half, and that it was a success only because I put everything I had into it to make it a success, and I didn't owe him anything, and couldn't even afford to hire him since he never actually did any work, which is true. Margins are slim, especially right now. Bro called dad and dad is agreeing with him, and asked me to make him a partner. I refused, and now they're both mad at me. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Make him a partner, ha, ha not even if he paid for half the business as it stands now dad. I agree. Bro sounds kinda lazy to be honest. Definitely not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Call a lawyer and cover your bases. People will do weird crap for half of a $1 million company. I hope you got the sale in writing. Yeah, it was originally a partnership, but now it's legally a sole proprietorship. Not the a-hole. You bought out your brother's interest. While he was there, he was a drain on resources, and by your own admission, did no work. As a matter of fact, your business was on the verge of failing. Once you bought him out, you put in the effort. You put in the resources, you put in the time and you put in the work to make your business successful. Meanwhile, he took himself off to Colorado to smoke grass. Look, he sold you his share, hopefully, you got it in writing, all legal like. He doesn't have a claim in the business that you made a success. Also, your father gave you a loan, which you paid back. If you get a loan from the bank, they don't expect a say in who you hire or not. Explain it again to your father and brother, or don't. But don't let them make you feel guilty that you put in a lot of work to make your business a success. Congratulations. 100% this, not the a-hole. Brother took off happily with 10k in his pocket when things got tough, after not only not putting in any effort but being a drain on resources himself. And when you turn things around and make it a success, he believes you owe him a slice of it. Yeah, he's clearly indefinitely high. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my non-biological son his college fund that I have been funding for the last 18 years because he wanted to live with his real dad? About 6 years ago I bought my oldest child one of those home DNA tests to find ancestors and I found out that my 12-year-old was not my biological son. After official lab testing it turns out that only 2 out of 4 of the kids were actually mine. Luckily, my wife and I signed a marriage contract forfeiting marital property, common in my religion, in the event of infidelity and this gave me rock solid proof. I gave my children an ultimatum because I did not want my ex-wife in my life period, no co-parenting BS. Although it was probably not the best decision, we let the children choose, 12 male, 10 female, 8 female and 7 male, who they wanted to live with, and my ex-wife decided to move to another state with one of her many cheating partners, approximately 500 miles away. I assumed they would all stay with me because my wife was a complete psycho, that I believe abused them. Unfortunately, when the oldest child, 12 male, heard that he had a real dad that was not me, he decided to live with my mom to have a relationship with his bio dad. My 10 female daughter's bio dad passed away and she was always very close to me, so we had no issues maintaining our father-daughter dynamic in light of this info. Fast forward 6 years and ex-son is 18 and planning to go to college. When each of my children were born, I immediately started putting away money for them in a fund for them to spend on college, house payment or whatever really. I have done well in my business and my oldest son's fund is about $120,000. I originally paid my son and ex-wife monthly for child support and alimony. Both of these commitments were barely enough for them to live on, 
because we agreed to a lower settlement when her lawyers realized she had no chance in court due to her being the town bicycle. Apparently, his mother has been telling him about his fund and expected that I would be paying this out. However, these funds were marital property and belonged to me. This child calls another man father and has barely spoken to me in six years, despite me making several attempts to reach out to him with birthday cards and offers for him to come for holidays. So I said, these funds were started for my children, and had you decided to be my child, this fund would belong to you, and hung up the phone. Obviously, this infuriated him and he responded by calling my business partners and telling them that I disowned my son because he was gay. I think the biggest irony is that, I have so little relationship with him that I did not even know he was gay until this incident, but he thought that my conservative values had something to do with him not getting the fund. Am I the a-hole for not giving him the fund? In fact, I plan to give his fund to my soon-to-be stepson who is only 5 male instead. I realize I am punishing a child for mistakes made when he was a 12-year-old, but at the same time he did not want to be my child and these funds were meant for my children. I'm gonna get heat for this but not the a-hole. 1. Not your kid. 2. Kid doesn't think of you as father. 3. Ex-wife is a cheater. Her and her spawn don't deserve a single cent from you. 4. As you said, the money is yours. Edit. I completely missed the part where you said the girl who is not your child but chose to be your child and have a relationship with you is still getting her fund. And that after you told your not son who wants nothing to do with you that the funds were for his children, he tried to ruin your career. This further justifies you. Not the a-hole. I also want to add, the 18-year-old could have changed his mind and responded to OP's attempts to keep in touch. But no. He only rematerializes with his hand out, expecting money. The hell with that. That's the kicker. OP says he's not punishing the ex-son for a decision made when he was 12. But that decision wasn't just made when he was 12, is a decision he made when he was 12 and chose to reinforce every day for 6 years until he realized there might be a 6-figure payout. And even now, he's not actually rolling back on the decision, he's just demanding the money. I gave my children an ultimatum because I did not want my ex-wife in my life period, no co-parenting BS. It's not just your ex, you're the a-hole too. Making children choose sides in a divorce is already bad. Asking them to leave one parent forever is even worse. It would be so easy to say, I don't want these kids, take them to the ex. It's not perfect, but men do take this option when they feel nothing for a cheater's child. Instead, OP it appears wanted the kids to shun mom, and tried forcing children to solve two adults problem with an ultimatum. So to summarize, everyone sucks here, and you all need therapy. This. You can't make kids choose a parent. This is so messed up, and I get it, she cheated, but the kids were not to blame for her stupidity. Anyhow, everyone sucks here. Dad for making the kid choose and then being bitter about it. The ex-wife for obvious reasons. The 18-year-old for feeling entitled to money when he's made no effort to be a son to the man who raised him for 12 years. I was tempted to say NTA for the question posed, but you're the a-hole for everything else. But honestly, you're just the a-hole. You put your children, especially your two non-bio children, in an absolutely awful position. How dare you? How petty to take out your anger at your wife and your failed marriage on innocent children. You raised your son for 12 years, and then abandoned him. I don't care that he chose his mother over you, he was a child, and you forced that decision on him. I'm sorry your ex-wife put you through the infidelity and the shock of your children not being biologically yours, but grow up. Also. You say you are punishing him for a mistake he made when he was 12. No 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 no. You are still punishing him for a mistake you made when he was 12. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not giving my half-sister any of my inheritance and saying her situation is a result of her choices? My father had me quite late in life, which sadly also meant that I lost him sooner. He wasn't super rich, but he had some money in his name, so there was a decent inheritance. Of that inheritance, 50% went to my mother, and 25% to me and my half-sister each. We both spent the money quite differently. I put half of it in the bank, and used the other half as a down payment on a house, allowing me to become a homeowner quite early. My half-sister and her then-boyfriend used it on a business idea that didn't work out. And then after they broke up, she used it on another idea that also did not work out. She also found out she was pregnant after she had already broken up with her boyfriend but decided to become a single mom. She basically blew all the money in under 5 years. About 1.5 years ago she started asking me for small loans. 
First it was for Mona, nieces, school supplies. Then it was for her car, etc. Anyway, I loaned her about 500 euro and never saw any of it back. Recently she asked me for something again. And I told her I'm not giving her an extra cent until she gives me back what she borrowed. Anyway, this is when crap hit the fan. She said it's unfair, that she has a child to take care of, that I don't need the money as much, and also that I'll inherit more once my mom dies because I'm her only child. She said she feels like she should get more of the inheritance because she has Mona. I pretty much laughed at the notion, told her that's ridiculous, and that she was being rude about my mom, and told her that her bad finances are a direct result of her bad life choices, and that she is getting nothing. I said that she has no legal claim to anything, true, and I still expect that 500 back. She started crying on the phone, but I just hung up. I might have been harsh, but I still feel the situation is entirely of her own doing, and she'd likely blow any money I would give her anyway. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She made choices and those choices have consequences. Were you a bit harsh? No harsher than she was when she said you'll get more money when your mom dies. She needs to be an example to her daughter and manage her own crap. I'd argue OP was less harsh than her half-sister counting OP's eggs before mom croaks. It may not even be true. Mom could live to a ripe old age and use all her money on herself while alive. Half-sis is pretty disgusting for throwing the whole just wait until your mom dies, you lucky duck attitude in there. Not the a-hole, you both got what you're legally entitled to from the inheritance, it's not your responsibility to bail her out if she's having financial difficulty. It's not fair you budgeted your inheritance better than me. So I am entitled to your money. Holy entitlement, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your sister made her bed and now she has to lie in it. Write off the 500 euros you'll never get back, but don't loan her anymore. Yeah, I don't think I'll realistically get that back, but that's it for me. You learn an important and valuable lesson. For 500 euro, that's a bargain. Never lend money without written condition of how and when they must pay it back. Avoid lending money to family members. To be honest, it's just her. I fronted my best friend's advance on their flat and it was all handled impeccably. Prior to heritage, my mom would loan me even for big things, and I'd make sure I'd get it back. Yes, I know now that she's that kind of person. Though I don't think it's universal. I'm just used to being around people with a different sort of ethics slash handling of money. The reason I did not think much more of it, is that I never had bad experiences with it before. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for using the rest of my daughter's tuition money to pay for her sibling's schooling? I'm, 47 female, a mother of three. One daughter, 20, and two boys, 19 and 18. My husband died three years ago unexpectedly, and our lives have been hard ever since. My husband passed away six months after we moved to a new country in Europe, and ever since. My father has been our primarily financial carer and he financially supports my children's schooling and whatever activities that needed to be paid for. My father passed away last month due to a kidney failure, and I am in the process of inheriting some of his money. Six months before he passed away, he gave me $5,000 to pay for my daughter's university as she was starting her first year. I paid for the first semester, $1,800, and the rest I decided to spend on my two boys' private schooling. My father does not know that my boys are still behind in school and I couldn't bear telling him in fear of humiliation. I didn't want him to be disappointed in me. My daughter found out a few months ago that I spent her tuition money on her siblings and was really upset with me, but I promised her I was gonna figure it out and pay off the rest of her first year when the time comes. She was okay with that. But due to my father passing away during her first semester finals, I was not able to come up with the money in time to pay her second semester. The inheritance money is gonna take a couple of months to come through and my daughter was incredibly upset. We had arguments. She called me uncaring and selfish. She screamed at me for spending her money, but in my opinion, she was being selfish calling it her money. So I told her exactly that. Her brothers have a right to an education as well. I couldn't leave them still behind in school, and I paid a lot of money to the school they're in right now to help progress them quicker. She argued that she had to endure studying in a public high school in a completely different language that she didn't speak or understand during her senior year, and that her brothers dropped out of it because they couldn't handle it, and were spoiled rotten and that's why they are behind. And she said she didn't demand private schools out of respect for our lack of money. 
She also said that she's studying in a cheap university in a major that she wouldn't have picked because the university had only two departments in English language. That was her point that she wasn't being selfish at all. I feel like she is being super ungrateful. I kept her well fed and put a roof over her head, and she was speaking and screaming at me disrespectfully. But I feel a little bad, but her university accepted to give her some time until I get my inheritance money to pay, so it's no big deal. I feel like the a-hole because I should have thought it through and took account that my father might pass away unexpectedly, but how could I have known? She is not speaking to me right now and is convinced that I'm an a-hole. Am I the a-hole? The rest I decided to spend on my two boys private schooling. You disrespected your father's last wish. Legally he could have ensured that the money went to the proper cause if he made a will and your daughter could sue you possibly. My father does not know that my boys are still behind in school and I couldn't bear telling him in fear of humiliation. You caused this issue in the first place by not telling your father the truth about your financial situation and your kids schooling, he could have resolved the issue by deciding where he wanted his money to go. Now you are hopping into a baseless promise with your daughter, just because you didn't want to disappoint a dying man. Instead you disappoint the living, by your choice to mismanage their funds. You should take a hard look at your abilities, not wishful thinking of how you can apologize and realistically remedy the situation. Your daughter seems to be hurt because she lost faith, trust and money with you, because you didn't communicate with her what the situation was. I don't believe she wants her brothers to not have the best possible chances in education, but you should have told her before taking her money. Think about this in the future. Ask first, and look for a solution. Then you won't have to ask questions like this here. Yes, you're the a-hole. Also, how dare you? I feel like she is being super ungrateful. I kept her well fed and put a roof over her head and she was speaking and screaming at me disrespectfully. She didn't ask to be born, or fed or kept under a roof over her head, that is your responsibility as an adult who chose to push out babies and give them private schooling that you couldn't afford. Also, the roof and food weren't even paid by OP but by OP's father. Yes, you're the a-hole. You appended her life. You prioritized the well-being of her male siblings and you spent her education fund. Part of this was due to you wanting to avoid feeling embarrassed about your sons not doing as well as your daughter in school. Caring for her basic needs is bare minimum. Where is your concern for her future? For her happiness? She has endured your poor decisions with no complaints until it hit the point where she might have her future entirely taken away, with no time for her to plan around your decisions. You owe her an apology. It is actually worse than being embarrassed. OP's father does not support private schooling and would not have supported his money going to the son's private school. Not to mention the only reason the sons are going to private school is that they refuse to attend public school since it isn't in English. You're the a-hole. Your father gave you the money specifically for your daughter's tuition. End of story. Also why aren't you working? Your children are basically all grown up and can be left alone at home. It's rich of you to say that you kept her fed and gave her a roof over her head which is a minimum for a parent to do and doesn't require excessive thankfulness, while not actually being the one to bring the money in. In the end of the day, it was not you that kept her dad and clothed but your father. I'm not working because I don't have a degree and I was a stay-at-home mom when my husband was alive, and it's requirement to know the language of the country I'm living in in order to land a job. Edit, I will apologize to my daughter and I will make it up to her when I receive my inheritance. I love my daughter dearly and I will do better as a mother to provide for her. I accept my you're the a-hole verdict. Edit 2, people have been asking me how my children are going to work in a country they don't speak the language of. My sons, my daughter hasn't mentioned any of her plans yet, plan on moving to a different country after they graduate university and will be working wherever they go. I assume it's a more English speaking country. I love where I'm living and I own my apartment here. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit